All right, today I'm in Deland, Florida at the Deland Municipal Airport. Today we're gonna to talk about the Bushcat aircraft. My name is Daniela Canole. I'm with Aerosport, and we are the U.S. distributor for the uh, Skyreach Bushcat. So let's have a look at the Bushcat. So the Bushcat is available as an SLSA factory built for you, uh, but you can also purchase the kit and build the kit yourself. So you can build it as EAB, you can build it as an ELSA. Um, the aircraft is available as a tricycle gear, tail dragger configuration. No difference in cost there, it's just how uh, it's packed. There's a few differences in the construction itself. So the Bushcat is a very simple build. So it's a, it's a very quick build type of uh, kit. It's mostly a bolt-on process, so you're, you're really just kind of needing to have a good wrench, uh, metric wrench set, and you're good to go. There's not any welding involved. Um, there's very minor drilling and some riveting, but uh, otherwise it's just putting nuts and bolts together. The fabric itself, uh, which we can talk about in a little bit, is actually laced on. So there's no stitching, heat shrinking, any of that involved. So this is a really, really fast uh, aircraft to build. So what, what powers this awesome machine here? So the engine of choice is the Rotax 912 ULS uh, for the Bushcat. Uh, we don't, uh, so the kit itself comes with the engine mount for the Rotax 912 ULS. Uh, we're looking into the future of obviously providing the option of the fuel injected IS engine at this time We don't have any factory support for it. And what are some of the performance specs utilizing this hundred horsepower Rotax? So this aircraft is, is kind of meant to be the backcountry bush plane, stole aircraft, um, short takeoff landing um, slow stall speed so you're in the low 30s for your stall um, cruises about 90 to 100 miles an hour um, so it's kind of that low, slow, enjoy flying around the area, um, but it's also a great trainer aircraft. So it, it's very versatile. It um, can certainly land in all sorts of terrain. And so with the 100 horse Rotax, what kind of climb out uh, can you see with you know feet per minute and that kind of stuff? 1,200 foot a minute uh, climb rate with the with the 100 horsepower, less than 300 feet takeoff and landing distance. So we usually, I mean, especially. Uh, we're located in Illinois, we're at uh, 800 feet, so we're off in 100 foot, you know, usually it's a, it's a, it's a dream to see this thing take off. Uh, so in that configuration, what kind of uh, fuel efficiency do you, do you find with the Rotax? Uh, it's very fuel efficient. We average anywhere from three and a half to four and a half gallons an hour, depending if you're in the pattern, if you're just cruising uh, for a flight around. So it's uh, incredibly fuel efficient. Um, on average, three to three and a half, four gallons is a pretty good average. And what is your, your prop, your propeller of choice uh, in this configuration? So the Kiev prop has been really a great, um, uh, it has been very compatible with the Rotex engine for us. So we use the three-bladed um, 283 model of Kiev, um, and for some reason it I don't know if it's the combination of the propeller and the engine and the exhaust system for the Bushcat that it makes it for a very quiet flying aircraft compared to a lot of other light sports with the same engine. So this plane looks like it has a pretty good ease of entry and uh, I like the doors on it. Um, can you fly with or without the doors and can you show us what it's like to get in and out of this thing? Yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of one of the, the bigger selling points is the fact that this aircraft is so easy to get in and out of. Uh, bigger individuals, uh, older individuals that might have issues with bending their, their legs 
makes it for very easy entry. Um, the door itself is literally held on by two pins at the top, which are then removed. And once you remove those pins, you are flying with no doors. So you can fly without the doors on a nice hot summer day. It's a dream. So you have that open cockpit feel. Uh, to get in and out of the aircraft, you lift up the armrest, which is our uh, very specific design with the throttle built into it. Um, that's something that's very unique to the bush cat and a lot of people love. So when you enter the aircraft, it's a simple butt first process where you can step up on the tire, use the strut for support, lift up on the seat, and then you swing your legs right in. Once you're in, you lower your armrest, and you're good to go. So the fabric covering of the Bush Cat is very unique as well. It's called uh, Trilam, which is actually manufactured by a German company for sailboats that um, like the professional racing yachts use. It's a very durable fabric. Uh, it's extremely uh, uh, tight as it comes, so it doesn't require any heat shrinking. Basically, it comes like an envelope, which gets then slid on, and then it just gets laced up. So over here under the gap seal, you can kind of see how it's been laced on to the wings. Um, the gap seal then covers any of that for debris, which is really nice. Um, the tri uh basically has a cross stitch, which is built into the center of the material, and that provides your ripstop, so that if you do get a puncture or a cut, it won't spread on you, um, which is really nice. It can be repaired with a patch job. Um, the fabric already comes in five different colors, so you don't have to paint it. Um, in order to add any graphics to it, like this zebra stripes, all that is is essentially vinyl that was added over on top of an all-white aircraft same way as we add the end numbers with an additional vinyl that goes on top of it. The Bush Cat does have mechanical flaps. Uh, it does have a 17 and 26 degree flap setting. Uh, it's a nice size flap there that provides that low stall speed for us as well. A few features have been added to the Bush Cat within the last year. It's been pretty much one of the most tested light sport aircraft on the market to make sure that we are compliant 100% with ASTM standards. A few things that were added were an aileron fence, which provides an uh, easy way to recover from a stall, uh, essentially almost on its own. Uh, another thing that was changed was a large empennage was added in order to also provide horizontal vertical stability to the aircraft, even more than it already had, honestly. So as the as the change sides. As the rudder moves, that moves with it even more. Wag the tail. Wag the tail. So with the Rotax engine, obviously you can fuel uh, MoGas or AvGas. Um, the fueling system is from the top fuel filler, which is also something that was recently changed. Uh, you can access the baggage compartment by simply unzipping the fabric, which is another key feature. You will find a lot of zippers under the wings that we can also show you later. Uh, the baggage compartment can, um, has a capacity of 91 pounds in total, so you can take a lot of camping gear, you can take all sorts of things with you on an adventure for the bush cat. And on that topic, what is the, uh, the empty weight, uh, and obviously it's a SLSA, so it's 1320 gross, but what's the empty and your usable? Yeah, with the 1320 we get a pretty high useful load in the 500 to 550 mark uh, at that point. So. Um, they come in depending on how it's configured. Tail draggers tend to be a little heavier. Um, 740, 750 pounds is an, an average empty weight we've seen lately. And how much fuel capacity? It's actually about 24 gallons of fuel, which is quite a lot. So with that low fuel burn, you have an endurance of about seven hours, which my bladder usually uh, <laughs> will boycott. So it's it's kind of you you. This certainly is comfortable enough to go cross country uh, for many hours. I've done it from Illinois down to Florida and back. Uh, it's extremely fun to do, uh, but it's meant to be the backcountry low slow type of aircraft. So explain the the, the uh, tricycle landing gear, the, the type of landing gear system you use. Whether there's a suspension built in and then the tires and all that stuff. So the Bushcat actually uses the Grove landing gear, which is used by a lot of uh, other manufacturers as well. We really like the Grove gear because it provides that sprung type gear. 
so that gives you sort of that, that shock system. We also use the Carlisle um, like mini, mini Tundra Turf Glide tires, which also provide that option for uh, being able to land on any sort of terrain. So these are the standard tires the aircraft comes with, essentially, or the, the standard nose wheel version. Um, we can't go any bigger than this because the nose fork does limit a little bit on that size. The tail dragger, you can certainly go up to 27 inch, 38 inch tires if you wanted to and really put on the, the big Tundra look. And is there any type of suspension built into the nose gear? Yes, there is uh, through some bushings on the nose fork on the inside uh, firewall area. All right, so to me, one of the defining features of the Bushcat is the cowling. It has almost like a sport bike look to it. Is there is there form and function here to it, or just aesthetics? Well, a little bit. Of course, obviously, design always does help make the aircraft attractive to a potential buyer, but it actually is designed. There's obviously some thought behind it. It does provide a really, really great cooling, so we don't, we don't have run into any problems with cooling on this. Uh, certainly does provide plenty of airflow. We also have two oil coolers actually built in for the, the hot areas then don't ever see any problems with it. We've got a big radiator down at the bottom so uh, it not only looks cool but it is extremely efficient. So this is definitely designed to be low and slow and a really good climb out with plenty of cooling. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's designed for the African bush, right? So the manufacturer being in South Africa um, kind of thought all that through, so it's perfect for that. To give us an interior tour. So the bush kit is extremely ergonomic, so it, it's actually a very comfortable cockpit. It's one of the widest in the light sport category, so you can have two very large individuals sitting next to each other and never rub shoulders. Uh, so that's a key feature for a lot of people that just simply don't fit in, in your average light sport airplane. Uh, so besides that, we have the armrest uh, throttle integrated into the armrest, so that's a key feature we've already talked about. You, you have your trim and your choke levers kind of at easy reach right in the center. The Bush Cat has a center stick. This one in particular has an instructor stick on the side which just bolts on and off. Uh, we utilize this aircraft in flight training, so that's why it's on. Uh, from there, we basically have the operations of the flaps, which are straight up mechanical flaps we talked about earlier. Hey, thanks for joining me on this episode. Let me show you who's made all these videos possible. Awesome companies like Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Airworks at AirWorksAviation.com and visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. All right, everyone, before we jump back in, if you like these videos that we are producing weekly, rivet down that like button and engage all notifications by hitting that bell so you don't miss a single episode. Remember to check out the description below this video for links and special affiliate offers available to you. So the seats are not necessarily um, able to be moved forward or back, but they're in a comfortable position as you sit with a four-point harness uh, with the seat belts here. You've got a little bit of lumbar support along the bottom. Everything is cushioned. Uh, you even have a center console glove box area where you can store all sorts of things. The nice thing about it is this whole thing comes completely out and then you can take a look at all your control cables. So there's really nothing on this aircraft that you actually can't see. Um, Pre-flights uh, condition inspections are extremely easy and fast for that reason. Um, how, so, how tall of a pilot could you be in here? So we've had uh, six, five, six, six individuals where they are not having any issue with headspace. Um, there's ways that we can, for example, remove the sunshade that is a standard option um, and we've been putting vinyl perf on the actual windscreen itself so that gives you an extra like two inches of headroom if you need it. Really basic stuff is most popular. Um, you know the, the Bush Cat, we stand behind the concept of being very affordable so the more basic packages are what people are mostly looking for. 
This particular aircraft has kind of gone to the extreme, so this is sort of the most decked out type of bush cat you could possibly buy. It has a dual HDX um, Dynon panel, uh, EFIS panel, so this one is, is pretty set, set up. You could potentially uh, do a lot of you know, more advanced training in something like this. The kit itself is basically everything that's firewall back. So what's not included in the kit is going to be your engine, propeller, instruments, or the tires. Um, but everything else is there. The seats, everything that you're going to see on this aircraft right now is included. Uh, the build time on average is about 350 to 400 hours. So uh, what really takes the longest time is going to be your avionics and your engine installation. But in general, the structure like we talked about earlier is just putting uh, nuts and bolts together and it's mostly an assembly type of process. The price point for the kit is currently 34000 um, and that's, as I said, without uh, any of the firewall forward packages. Um, lead time currently is about three to four months to receive a kit from South Africa. So the SLSA option is also available. Uh, the factory built uh, aircraft are being assembled by us here in the United States and the, the lowest panel package starts at 86,500 out the door with the Rotax 100 horsepower engine. All right, then we have the tail dragger option, which is this most popular or about 50-50? Uh, uh, it's about 50-50 right now. It really just kind of depends on the year. I don't know. It's, it's For a while there, the nose wheel took a lead, but we're about 50-50 right now. This particular one is here. Uh, it's an older aircraft here uh, in for some maintenance and a condition inspection, so we can show you a little bit of the differences between that and a nose wheel. Um, the, the main gear is the same type of gear we use on the tricycle gears, just move forward. Uh, and because of that, an added bracing is added to the cockpit area. So there's, there's added reinforcement in the tail dragger here that the nose wheel has in different spots. So that's one thing that we do get asked if you buy a tricycle gear, can you convert it into a tail dragger? And you really can't because it does, I mean, I shouldn't say you can't, anything's possible, but it's almost a complete teardown to do so. So it just doesn't seem economical. Yeah, so we've expanded into DeLand as a branch. Uh, we're really focusing on the flight training aspect here in DeLand, utilizing our Bushcat aircraft, um, but also provide maintenance uh, services. So we have a full-time AMPIA mechanic here at DeLand, able to provide maintenance not only for light sport, any road tech specific stuff, but also for pretty much any GA type of maintenance. Uh, we've expanded that part of our service down to Florida. Our main location up in Illinois is busy building bush cats, doing light sport maintenance, also with flight training. So uh, the land is the place to be, especially for light sport apparently. So uh, we jumped on the uh, possibility and we're excited to be here. So in order to get a hold of us, you can certainly uh, jump on our website, fly-aerosport.com. You can reach us at 888. 211-1773 and you can find out about all the services and products that we represent. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Remember to rivet that like button and engage all those notifications. Be sure to check out experimentalaircraftchannel.com. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. <laughs>